Here we go, Jeremiah. We, we, we had some lighting issues here, and it looks like I didn't have a test. Let's have a test. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead with this. Uh, we need some more lighting here. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. I apologize. I thought we had enough light here, and evidently we do not. Uh, we're going to go ahead on. I uh, Let's go. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We're headed into 70-something here videos, and I'm very happy to share with you the, the situation here, that we are excited to get into the April Matrix. And uh, once again, I apologize for the lighting here. I'm, I'm going to do something about this. I thought we had lighting, and I'm ready to go, of course, and, uh, and I didn't have a light check. Last time it was fine. Something strange is going on here, and I don't know what it is. I got music here. I actually have some secular music here. But I haven't heard in six months that I want to listen to. Every six months or a couple of months, I'll put in some secular music. I have a lot of secular music, but I just don't have time for it. And that was some jazz that I bought years ago. This is Jeremiah. He is on fire. We're going to get to the April Matrix. We greet you in the only name given amongst men. I put my science lesson up here, as I may make reference to this a little later. We never get away from, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It's a definite, definite article. The heaven and the earth. There's nothing else, by the way. There's no other place to live. There's no round nothing. There's no balls nothing. This is it. This is heaven and earth. There is nowhere else to live. There's nowhere else that's got dirt or you can live or it's all nonsense. Right here in this bowl is where all celestial beings are. Stars. Wandering stars, which are planets and regular stars. They're all in this dome right above your head. Okay, you want to get more information? Go to my science lesson. Science is a forgotten aspect in Christianity for, ever since America was founded. And, and, and it's not good. It's not good for you to see something in front of you that's good for you and for you not to take advantage of it. It's never good for you. Okay? I mean, all things are lawful for you, but all things are not profitable for you. Uh, what's profitable for you is to get into science, Bible science. Now let's get let's get to the April Matrix here. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. Let's get going. As we say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd; I have no want here. He maketh me lie down. We have some scriptures here on the computer screen that I wanted to look at today as we get into basics. Now, what we're going to start doing is we're going to have a lesson on basics, and then we're going to have a little more complicated video. Okay? Uh, I don't want you people, you young people out there, or you you you. Uh, newbies to get discouraged by too much information. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably have 79A and 79B from now on. Let's take a look at that right now. Um, I want to I want to have I don't know how I had two here anyway. Yeah, we're looking at 79 right now. We'll double check that. And this, of course, is April showers. This is the April matrix, and it's just about done. We're on the 20-something here. We're on a 24 today. So we're getting close to May now, and I want to be on schedule. So let's get going. So here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start having two videos. That's my plan at this time. I may change my mind, but it's what's called tentative, which means I'm not totally sure. But here's the deal. We're going to have 79A and 79B. A is going to be very simple. B is going to be more complicated, but the same subject. We're going to get into an overview of the first seven The first seven uh, 
components of the April matrix, okay? Then in 79B today, I'll have a more complicated, uh, for you mature ones out there, okay? I think that's what we need to do because we're getting a little confused here. Uh, and I don't want anybody confused out there. So A is going to, from now on, A is going to be for you newbies and for you youngsters. And B is going to be the same subject, but it's going to be more complicated, okay? So let's do 79A. Are you, are you ready? This is April matrix. And we're finishing up the April matrix, okay? We're wrapping it up, which is 7 categories that I've selected from the annual matrix, which is 52 categories. I've selected seven of the 52, and I'm explaining them to you now so that you can get a good foundation for what Christianity is, okay? That's the, that's the purpose here. I'm a general practitioner. That's what I am in general, that, or, or that's, that's what I basically do here. I, I, I go off the page. This is not general practitioner here. 1% of every Christian that's ever lived out of 100 uh, understands this right here. However, it's simple grammar here. And you can't blame God for people not studying simple grammar. All this here is very simple grammar here. Fourth to eighth grade, twelfth grade stuff here. put it up here to remind you that we have a lot of science here, and, and, and I wanted to go through a little bit of this, maybe uh, to, in this video or the next video, just, just a little bit. Because this is what God said in the book of Genesis and so forth, with David and Job, you have heaven and earth right here. Heaven and earth is a canister. This is a can. It's about 24,000 miles high. That's all there is to creation. The only thing that's not involved in this can is down here. Again, I apologize for this lighting. I can't believe this. I had the light set up here, and I'm getting a little frustrated. I don't want to look like Joe in the dark here. We're going to continue with the lesson. I apologize. I'm going to get this fixed. I... Oh, I, I I'm here ready to go, you know, you're ready to go, and all of a sudden you thought the light was going to be fine, and it's not, it's not bright enough or something. Anyway, I, I, I promise not to drag you into my uh, unprofessional pre pre preparation here. I've had this problem over and over again, where I thought the light looked fine, and then when the video came on, and it was, oh, anyway. Uh, and I thank you for bearing with me on this lighting issue. I don't want to look like Joe in the dark here. Uh, but let's continue, though. Uh, we, everybody has problems. My, my dad had a, had, a, had a microphone and a speaker that sounded so crackly, you couldn't understand what he said. That was a 1965 Radio Shack speaker and microphone. That it, 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 I don't know how anybody heard anything. It was just so much noise, that, because that was back when they didn't have 64-bit. They had 2-bit. So we're getting a little spoiled. However, I want to give a decent presentation here, but let's get back to, to, to I'm going to make a couple of videos in the dark here. That's okay. Let's move on. Let's talk about, so I'm going to have 79A and B today, okay? 79A is going to be the April matrix, and I'm going to give you a quick overview for those of you who want a very quick, simple overview as to what's going on here in April in terms of the April matrix. And, and as, you, you, as you may remember, the April matrix is selecting subjects out of 52. I don't have the 52 here up on the board here right now, but I have a board with 52 categories that are available on this channel here. As time goes by, we'll have all 52 up here on the playlist. Okay, it's just that simple. There'll be 52. Every month, I will select from 52 some subjects to highlight. Right now we're highlighting covenant, doctrine, living bread, wisdom, faith, hope, and love, agape, or charity. Those seven. Let's move on now. I've, I've repeated this quite a bit, but I, I, I don't want to lose anybody. 
doesn't hurt you, you, you bright students out there or fellow teachers or whoever to uh, go over something in, in a somewhat redundant fashion, especially for the benefit of those who don't get things right away, okay? That's why you're slowing down. People who don't get things slowly, we have, we, we, have, we have a love for them and a care for them. But we're not going to go too slow, okay? So pay attention. Now, I have the hymns over there that I was going to work on. I changed my mind on that. We're going to have to wait for the hymns because I want to go through the hymns that are up there. I've chosen about 34 or 5 of the best hymns in America in the history of the United States that are the most popular ones in the United States and some in England and so forth. We want to go through those hymns pretty soon. We have to go through them because the words in there are just like Bible study. It is Bible study. And it's a very important part of Bible study. The songs we sing and the words, they're very enlightening and they help you with your Bible study and your relationship with the Master who we love. And, uh, and of course, we uh, in a couple of days we'll, we'll go over the... Um, the rapture again. The rapture is going to be every week or every one, every week or two weeks. I'm going to go over the basics of the rapture because we, we we need to stay focused on that heavy here. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to April matrix, the seven that I've selected for this month. Now let's let's let, let's take a peek at some of the uh, uh, easy. Let's have an easy uh, look at. The seven, okay? As you make a foundation for Bible study as a Christian. That's what we're doing here. A number two here is sound doctrine. I just went through 50 terms or so that are going to be a part of sound doctrine. There's, there's at least 40 terms that we have to go through in order to be decent C students as Christians. When the Bible says to love God with your mind, all of your mind, he's not playing around. Five-minute Bible study, just don't cut it with me. Now, let me remind you. Here's what we're going to do, and I'll say it one more time. This ministry is going to start having an A and a B for every session. I might even have an A, a B, and a C. So that you know that A is the very simple uh, perspective on what we're doing. B is a more complicated perspective, and C is for advanced students. And it's up to you, between you and the Lord, how you want to do it. For those of you who have not been Christians very long, A is probably what you need to watch, and then go to the next number, which has A, which will be 49A. I'm sorry, 70, uh, 80A, that's, uh, pardon me, that'll be 80A. In 81A and 82A for you who are just getting started. But it's up to you. It depends on how much pen and paper you have and how much you're willing to concentrate. It's up to you. Between, um, I mean, between you and the Lord, obviously. Okay? Now, let, let, let's get started. The living bread, the, 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 the heartbeat of all of this is essentially living bread. The April message, the heartbeat is basically living bread. I'll explain that later, but let's go through all seven. Now, remember, this is the simple video for you out there. Okay? Okay, Jeremiah, what's the basics of the seven here that you're talking about? Number one is covenant. Covenant means to make an agreement. With your maker, with God. In this agreement, and, and, and it's an offer, it's a chance of a lifetime to agree with the, this offer. And the Bible says, who has believed our report? We can look that up right now. Uh, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? 
53.1, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Huge scripture. It is an opportunity to agree with the report. Who has put confidence? Who wants to agree with this report? Who wants to agree with reality? Who wants to agree that they need to get their act together as a child of Adam? That's all this is. Who wants to go back to the fear of the Lord? Who out there? Who, who, who? So the key word is who. Now, what, what does the master use over and over again? Indefinite pronouns, over and over again. Whosoever, everyone. Meaning, if there's a steering wheel in your car, and God's going to allow you to steer in the right direction. And when you do, that's called wisdom. But the first concept is a 2,000-year-old offer, a chance of a lifetime, to put your confidence in a report. And the report is in the sound doctrine. That's the next principle. That's where the report is. In the red letters of Jesus Christ, that's the report. Are you going to allow reality and truth to be a part of your life? Because Adam and Eve believe lies. From the time they wake up in the morning until the time they go to sleep. Now, when, they, when all of a sudden the red letters of the red King James Bible are in their face, they are confronted with reality and the truth. And do you agree with the, with the, with the requirements in those red letters, yes or no? Got it? Do you agree? That's what covenant means. And in, 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 in your dictionary, it's probably going to say, on the same terms. Agreeing to the same terms on the same ground. Do you love love and love truth? There's a good chance you're going to come to Christ and you're going to serve him. And you're going to love love and love truth and hate evil and learn to do these things. And that's going to make you compliant to the covenant agreement. Which is found in sound doctrine. It's the set of principles that you are going to live by. Adam and Eve lost truth. They lost respect of the Lord. So Isaiah 53 tells you that God comes back to Adam and says, Who, out of all the children who have gone astray, who's going to believe in the value of taking in sound doctrine? Who, who's going who's gonna to do it? And when the Lord says who, he's presenting wisdom. Such as, where will wisdom be found? You can look at that scripture. In other words, there's an indefinite, I don't know what's going on from God. Goodwill towards men, as though, he, as though he doesn't know. And let's go to, I was going to go to, let's go to whosoever wills. Whosoever wills. All these terms, whosoever, and, 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 and uh, to whom, have to whom, it, 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 God is saying that he, 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 I don't know. Oh, that's another one. Where will wisdom be found? Uh, where will wisdom be found? Jesus knows everybody who's going to, be, he knows everybody who's going to be wise. But so, so why is he presenting it as though he doesn't know? Because he's watching it unfold. Are you listening? This is a simple presentation of the covenant and sound doctrine for you. The, the next concept is living bread out of the three. Covenant is an agreement and this agreement ground. Doctrine is what are the grounds? Number three is living bread. Those are the red letters and the commands of Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow me. Repent and be baptized. 
And of course, the, the big one is probably might, we might go to Matthew 3, uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand or something along those lines. These are bottom line scriptures, right? Matthew 3, 2. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's one of the major scriptures in your Bible. We're talking about basics today. That's one of the basic scriptures in your Bible that we talk about here over and over again. I'm making a foundation for this ministry as we start to build here. Number two is basic doctrine and basic commands. Now, living bread is specific commands. Such as repent. Matthew 3, 2. And, 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 of course, next is the, the, the quote from Isaiah. That John is, is the voice crying in the wilderness, telling all the children of Adam to repent and serve Jesus Christ. Repent means to have remorse and to turn. It means two, three basic things. You're turning and you have remorse. I, I'm sorry, Lord, I, I, I sinned against you and I confess the truth. There's no connection with God until you confess the truth. There's no, there's no connection. You're, you're very much like an animal. God prioritizes truth. If you don't want to prioritize it, there's no soap. You, you, you'll, you'll never see God. He, he won't condescend at Jordan. That's what Jordan means. So this is going over basic with you now that, that there's a covenant agreement and it has grounds and the grounds are the doctrine. And in the, in, the, in the doctrine, there's a lot of things to learn. Science, math, history, prophecy, psychology. I'm working on some psychology over here for you. I have a lesson, Babylonian ideology. I'm not going to go into that right now, but... Uh, that's for you more advanced students maybe, but uh, it's for anybody who's ready to listen. That'll be ready probably this fall. That's, that's, that's going to be a big job. So living bread becomes number three here. An agreement, the, 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 the grounds for the agreement, the teachings of your entire Bible, which, which are all build up your faith, and your love of Jesus Christ, and in that uh, group of uh, a group of subjects such as history and prophecy, the number one subject is living bread, pertaining to commandments to you as repentance and baptism and everything that's related to that. So you can receive the kingdom of God because it's at hand. You can grab it. You go to the River Jordan and you confess your sins to the to the Lord or, or in prayer by yourself. He hears everything. And, and then you, then you're in like Flint and you're on your way to salvation. You're, you're basically saved and, and, we, and we can move on. Now, within all of these subjects, such as David and Goliath, history and so forth, it's all very important stuff. It's critical. However, the, the, the main thing is scriptures like repent ye for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's living bread. That, those are things that you must do. You must take up your cross daily. You must put on a servant mind. Laying down your life for the brethren, according to John and Paul, is the love of Jesus Christ. What's the goal here? For you to successfully love Jesus Christ. So living bread is, I'm going to be humble, that means I love Jesus Christ, and I'm a winner. That's what this all means. And I'm going to go through all the scriptures that pertain to me, humiliating myself, put my yoke upon you, fall on the stone, uh, be buried, baptism, which is essentially the same as burying yourself in terms of your desires, and uh, allowing yourself for, to lay down your privileges and so forth for the benefit of building the church, which is the gospel, and for my name's sake. And it all means the same thing. That's essentially what living bread means. 
if any man eat this bread. So that becomes the big issue. Now we have some more repentance scriptures, um, but let's let that go. That's, that's, that's where a lot of basics uh, start when it comes to living bread and specifics. Who has believed our report? Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. There's Joel reference. We'll let that go. Let me see. I had a Joel reference there. But anyway, and then there's uh, then I have the scripture, which is, Oh, where shall wisdom be found? We have all these indefinite pronouns that, 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 that the Father and Son are using because they're living in real time. They know who's going to repent, but they're, but they're posing it out there to, to emphasize that people must exercise wisdom. You're going to have to use your steering wheel. God's going to steer, and, and he's the main steering wheel. He's the energy. But he gives you a steering wheel. That's why he says, where will wisdom be found? Because wisdom means that there's volition. And if there's volition, there's yield. And if there's yield, that means you have an option. In this race, that's what I mean. Now, our next concept is wisdom, of course, which means you're going to select living bread now. You're going to have wisdom found in you. Because you're going to eat living bread. You're going to walk around and say, I, I, I take up my cross daily and I hold on to the cross. I put his yoke upon me. The cross is daily while you have a human body. The yoke is permanent. Now and in heaven. We're not going to go into the... I'm going to stop right there because I'm giving a simple lesson right now on these seven concepts. Wisdom means you're going to do what I just told you, the, 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 the scripture we're going over. You're going to do these. You're going to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we can see that by you listening to the scriptures we're going over here. There are more, but I'm going to make this quick. Now, faith is number five in this list, which means you need to be confident that this is worth it. And that's wisdom. You need to place confidence in uh, the value of all of this. Confident expectation is what faith means. Now this is more along the lines, of course, of your daily confidence, such as uh, uh, things that are in your daily life and your human body. That's what, the faith, that's what the word faith basically means. Okay? All the, what did David say in Psalm 23? All the days of my life, I will lie down in my bed in comfort and being confident in God is, go, God is with me and he's a very present help and he is on the throne and there's nothing he can't do and so forth. And when you develop your love of Jesus, uh, in being perfected in love, you're going to be confident in everything. Mature Christians are confident in everything. They may have, they may have sways in their confidence, but they'll be rock solid, rooted and grounded the, the full armor of God is on, and they're confident in every kind of confidence there is. Every failing, no matter what it is. Because love owns confidence. I'm perfecting you and myself in love right now. And it's building our confidence. And of course it means you have little or no evidence as to as to how and how you're going to get what you're what you're expecting. That's what faith means. I, I I don't know what heaven looks like, but I'm confident that it's there. I don't know how God's going to bring me a healing, uh, but I know it's coming. That's what faith is. The Christian faith. Now the next is hope, which is, that's your top expectation. Out of all the things that I'm believing in, I'm believing I'm going to be healed, I'm believing God's going to take care of me tomorrow, uh, out of all the things that my top expectation, uh, which is the thing that I'm expecting that I really don't understand that well, is being with Jesus Christ. That's why it's called hope. Or the blessed hope. 
And the reason why it's blessed is because that's what really makes you happy. Uh, being healed tomorrow is not really necessarily going to make me extremely happy. The reason why is, is, is that I'll probably get sick again or I'm going to die anyway. The blessed hope is a permanent position. No more sickness. You're with the master and it's all done. That's what really should make you super happy. Of, your, out of all the things that you're expecting uh, from God. Your chief crown of rejoicing. I'm rejoicing that I'm going to have food tomorrow, and I'm rejoicing that God's going to bring me things, and I'm confident he's going to take good care of me. That's basic faith. But the blessed hope, or hope is, is when I'm going to be with the master, it's all over. There's no more faith needed when you're in heaven. Okay? The last one on the list, number seven, is, is agape, high love. It's a lifestyle of heaven. Okay? High love, high intelligence. High love, high intelligence. It's agape. It's charity. It's giving, knowing that uh, everything's going to be okay. Why is why this so important? Well, oh, why would you want to do without high love? Why would you want to do without high intelligence? Doesn't sound good to me. Okay, that's why this is all important. Fly means it's, you got ecstasy, ecstasy coming your way. The river of love. It sounds awfully exciting to me. Okay, so it's one through seven. It, it, there's an opportunity for you. Are you going to believe the report? The report is repent and be baptized. The report is to go to the sun, love the sun, uh, be, be very kind and caring, and, and take in the truth because you don't know the truth. And, and in this truth is living bread and wisdom and faith, hope, and agape. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to go to part two now. I'm going to explain some more. I'll be right back. Maranatha.